You thought baby rulers were gonna be safe? Right, today we're just doing a cluster of jumping. Uh, it's just gonna be one set, one cluster, and all we're gonna do is keep going. Um, we have a target velocity for the trap bar jumps at 0.8 meters per second, so the only thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep adding weight until my velocity drops below 0.8 meters per second, and then the set is done after that. Won't be doing it anymore. So yesterday was my heavy squat day, and then today I'm still doing jumps. So you'll notice that I pretty much do full body strength or power stuff every single day. And that's because instead of doing a whole lot of stuff, like a few times a week, doing a ton of work one day and then having to rest for like three days and then doing a ton of work and then resting for three days, I'm a big fan of doing a little bit a whole lot of times. So I do a little bit yesterday, I only did five reps on those super maximal squats and then a couple accessories and then today I'm just doing one set of this until I reach my target velocity and the goal is to get the heaviest weight possible with the target of 0.8 meters per second on the velocity. So yeah, I'm a big fan of doing a little bit a lot. It allows me to get more days of work in. If I happen to miss a day, instead of like say I was only lifting two or three days a week, if I miss a day, I've missed like half the week. With this, if I miss a day, I still have four more days of work that I get in. And it helps me get in a bigger variety of work instead of just doing a ton of squats or something twice a week. I can do super maximal squats one day, I can do jumps the next day, I can do some type of single leg variation the next day, I can do a different type of jumps the next day. So I can vary my focus every day, get a bunch of different types of movements in throughout the week. That's 1.77. Now we go jump. So I measure the jump height on the drop jumps, uh, mainly just to have a number to compete with. Every time I jump I want to get a higher number, and that allows me to put out more power in my jump because I'm competing with my height every time. You can also measure, you can also compete with like RSI or you can compete with uh, ground contact time. Today I'm competing with height. Now we're going to do some single leg drop catches, so I'm going to I'm actually going to switch, do the same side, and I just use this for balance. So I'm going to stand on this edge here, I'm going to drop this kettlebell and catch it. Gives you a little bit of a plyometric with the weight. And then after I do this, now I'm going to do a band assisted ankle rocker. So I'll go here, my weakest one, which is just an E bend, and then explode. Bend, explode. Still got 1.29. So I currently have a record of 305 uh, for 0.8 meters per second on this. So that's the goal today, hit 305 or higher. So we're currently at 235, going up to 285 for this next one, see how well the block still maintains. Now you'll notice I also keep my heels floating on this and on the drop catches, 
I'm also a big fan of doing movements with floating heels. Staying on slightly on the balls of my feet, just barely having my heels off the ground. It's more similar to what happens in sports. We don't really do things on our heels that often. So anywhere that I can, I mimic that in, in my strength and conditioning stuff. Obviously, you can't really do floating heels with like super heavy squats very well. You'll tip over. Um, but you can do it on a lot of things like trap bar jumps. Works pretty well. So we're gonna keep trying to stay above 0.8 meters per second here. See what we've got. 1.08. Getting closer. I'm gonna go for 305 next. 8, 8. It's not super heavy, but it's just enough to jerk you down and catch it and have to resist it back up. Similar, it's kind of like a plyometric movement. I mean, I guess technically. Not in the traditional plyometric uh, definition, but it's like a pseudo plyometric movement here. Sometimes I measure the, the band assisted jumps too, measure the height on those. I move this way, I don't know if the camera can really see it. Sometimes I measure the height on these too. You want to get about 10% higher with the band assisted jump than you do with your normal jump. So sometimes I measure to make sure I'm getting that. So if I took my single leg ankle rocker measurements from the other day, then I have an idea of where I should be here. And then when I use the band assistance, so I should go about 10% higher than that. We're gonna move up to 305 now. So my previous record for 0.8 meters per second on this was 305. So that's what we're going to try now. And in case you're wondering, we're measuring uh, peak velocity here. If we were doing something like a squat, um, we would do mean velocity. But anything that's like pure power, anything that's like a, a jump or a power clean or any type of ollie lift, we're going to measure peak velocity instead of mean velocity. Alright, so let's see if we can stay above 0.8 meters per second with 305 on the bar now. 0.93, so I actually beat my old record. You can also use the uh, the jump height measurement on the drop, the singular drop jumps. You can also use that to determine a drop off. So if you see your jump height significantly dropping, then you know you're getting pretty tired. And maybe you should call it a night. If you didn't know, this method we're using right here is called French Contrast. We do a heavyish lift. I mean, it can be heavy or it can be light. It just depends on what the goal is. Then we use some type of plyometric, usually a heavy plyometric. Then we use a speed lift or a weighted plyometric. Then we use an overspeed movement or an assisted plyometric or assisted jump, some type of overspeed. All right, so I broke my old record. I actually got 0.93 with the 305 on the bar. So now we're gonna see how much higher we can go while staying above 0.8 meters per second. So since I beat my previous record at 0.8 meters per second with at 305, 
now we're doing 325. We're going to see if we're still beating it or not. So we got 0.74. So we need to go down. 315. We got 0.92 at 315. This will probably, this next one will probably be the last one. So we failed at 320 or 325. We did good at 315. So now we'll test 320. See how that goes. Now we're trying 320, aiming for 0.8 meters per second or higher. Let's see where my power is. So my old record at 0.8 meters per second was 305. I surpassed that by quite a bit. I actually got 315 at 0.9 meters per second. And then I got 320 at 0.78, so just below 0.8 meters per second. So now that we've hit 320 and we hit 0.78, we know that if we go any heavier, we're not going to be hitting our target of 0.8 meters per second. So the, the cluster's done. We're done with like the main lifts of the day. And we're going to move on, just do some supplementary stuff, and that's the end of the day. Just do a little bit a lot. So if you're wondering what the point of jumping with all that weight on the trap bar is, and what the point of aiming for that 0.8 meters per second is, um, today is a little bit of strength speed work. So we want to move uh, moderate to heavy load really fast. So we're trying to move as fast as we can. That's why I like trap bar jumps, because you can actually load the bar super, super heavy, and you can just go all out, full power, jump as hard as you can. Even if you barely get off the ground, you can just go all out on it. So it's really good for training that. Really good for training like any power, really. Strength, speed, power, speed, strength. Trap bar is amazing for all of it. Shaler hops, basically gonna be leaning into the wall. I'm gonna do it for a minute straight on each leg. And uh, the goal here is just to build up the tissues in my ankle to prepare them for later on. So all we're going to do is lean in here in this deep position and just hop. So we're getting the, kind of that deep ankle bend that stresses your Achilles and stuff a little bit. And I can even push back with the wall. Like as I jump, I can use my arms to push back into my foot. We're just trying to get some submaximal high volume reps in here just to help build up the tissues and the lower leg. Like I said in other videos and in other posts, submaximal bounding and hopping is really good for building your body up. Not everything has to be all out all the time. If we're looking for power, then yeah, maybe. But most parkour people could probably put some time in just hopping and bounding at like 60 to 70% power just to build their body up. That way you'll be more prepared when you go all out. Next thing we're doing is an accessory lift. See you. Good morning. If you want to try this, I would recommend starting with extremely lightweight. Very, very light. I would recommend using extremely lightweight to start out. Do not go heavy your first time.
10 reps at 145. Now we're going to do a Hindo squat at 205 pounds. Um, this is probably going to look like something that everyone you've ever heard advice from has told you not to do, but uh, if you do it safely and progress it safely, it's actually pretty nice. Makes, you, makes my knees feel amazing. Gets some good work in on my feet and ankles as well. So, let's have a look. It's the only weird thing. It's good to have a cage nearby because sometimes you get a little off balance. Now we're going to go in that same position. We're going to do some calf raises there. But we're going to use the cage for balance. So we don't want to be balancing while we're trying to do these calf raises. So we use the cage to help us balance, and now we'll go. We're going to go a little bit light here today, but we're going to do a seated calf raise, but we're going to do it rhythmically. We're going to aim to be able to keep going for like a minute straight. So we're going to time it, and we're just going to rhythmically bounce. Maybe lean over a little more, put some more stress on it. I think this stuff's similar to like less like a calf raise where I'm like trying to really build a lot of muscle. I think it was more similar to like a submaximal plyo. It's kind of like pseudo plyometric movement. It's not really plyometric, but you're getting some good bounce in there. I'm just trying to build up the tissue a little bit. I'm trying to build up the tissues in my body, prepare them for later on. I can even pick up this kettlebell on the way up. To help my foot get up some. Yeah. Same thing. Just bouncing. Last thing. This last movement uh, comes from the spring ankle drill series, which is something that Cadiates and I believe Chris Corfus came up with. It's a very nice uh, series of isometric movements that I really like for my ankles and feet. So we're going to do one for each leg, we're going to try to hold it for a minute.
Ten more seconds. That's it for the day.